Hey coders, welcome back to the app walkthrough here. We're gonna be taking this video to begin wiring up our app container, which will be part of our stack navigator using React Navigation version three. We're gonna do some slight, we're gonna do some extra refactoring here in my app.tsx, which is my entry point, right, of the application itself, where the index.js is our entry point, but the very first root level app would be our app.tsx. I'm going to change this import statement to be asterisk as React, so we can do our TypeScript safe import statement here for React. I'll have to alter it to react.component as my import. I probably won't need states, but I'm gonna go ahead and make the state object so I can type it here as well. There we go. And let's go ahead and start talking about what we're gonna need to do for React navigation. It's going to be unique in that we have to make an app container that's going to be a function that returns a create stack navigator. So I'm gonna make a new file, and I don't say component, I said file in the source directory, and we're gonna call it our app container.ts. There's a ts and not tsx file. It doesn't actually render any kind of tsx to the screen. And I should probably save this file before I forget and cause some headache or save some headache later, right? We're gonna to have to import at least two things from this guy to start with. And we're gonna do them from the React Navigation module here. And the two things we are going to need will be our create stack navigator, which will be our function that creates the stack. And we're also gonna to need to import our uh, create app container, which will be a function that wraps our app navigator as an injected almost as we send it out as we export it out rather. So we're gonna go ahead and start with that. And we're going to also end up needing some kind of home screen to demo this code on. Um, so that's why I left our app.tsx fairly simple looking so we can copy and paste it into another file and have that be our home screen. Cause like, just kind of like in your React router DOM apps, if you guys remember those web apps that we made using React, the React, your um, app.j or TSX kind of became like the controller for the rest of your application. It didn't have a lot of, you know, setting state inside of it, didn't do a lot of interactivity. It just kind of acted as like a master layout controller for your app. And we can kind of think of our app container and app.tsx in the same way. I'm gonna go ahead and start by writing our app navigator is what we're gonna be exporting as a function, which will be using create, oops, create stack navigator, and there we go. And that's a function that takes uh, at least one, if not two configuration objects. So I'm gonna write them both empty in here to start like so, to make sure we don't lose our place with what's going on. And I mentioned we're gonna have to do an export default. And if you haven't seen this before, it might actually be familiar if you followed along in the Stripe API, third, the third party API video, where we had to send out some kind of injected function or component, right? And that's where we're gonna be doing our app navigator, like so. So we're gonna be exporting this app navigator function injected with the create app container uh, props, right? So the very first object is where we're going to have our, I guess I can make a note of this, screens declared and what, they're, and what they are named and what component they're supposed to load. And then down here will be our like generic styling options where we can stylize whatever we want on our header. We can stylize the he like the color of the header, like the background color, text color, what the initial route is supposed to be, all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm gonna leave these as comments for now, because like I mentioned, we're gonna need to at least have one screen we can demo for our app navigator to work. So I'm gonna come into my screens directory here, and I'm gonna make a new file. And we're gonna call it all blogs. Its purpose, as you can probably imagine, will be to display all blogs. So we're gonna import React from React as usual. And honestly, I can probably copy some of this right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, you know, I'm just gonna do a full copy. Cause what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of use this as our template over time. We're gonna want view text and style sheets. Um, that way we can have, again, just kind of centered text, just like we had in the last demo. I'm gonna call this guy all blogs. And because it's an export default, technically it doesn't matter what we call it since we can just import it as whatever we want on the other end, but I'm gonna be consistent in its name usage. And as a quick test, 
I'm gonna call this the all blogs screen text. So it's not gonna actually do anything yet. It's just gonna be the basic styled screen we've already been generated by our app.tsx. And we're going to see if we can't wire this into our stack nav. Can it load all blog screen as an initial route and in our navigation options? So with all blogs.tsx done and saved and inside of our screens um, directory here, I'm going to head back to my app container.ts here and we need to import that screen for use. So I'm gonna import all blogs from this directory slash screens slash all blogs. And this is where I mentioned our screen object will be in play. So we have to define a property, which will be the name of the screen. And we can refer to it as a string anywhere else on our application, which will make more sense when we get there. And the value will be the component that we want to show. So if I had something like home screen, I could say when I'm on the home screen, I want to load all blogs. If you want to get fancy or if you want to have look like you know what you're really doing, we can say instead of calling it home, which does completely make sense, the home screen should show all the blogs. It should show a preview of all the blogs, kind of like our web app already does. We can just call this the all blogs screen that loads the all blogs component. And as you guys know with ES6 shorthand, if the key and the value are the same, we can shorten the hand this down to just all blogs and it should work. Now for some generic styling. You can look at the React-Navigation documentation for how to totally customize your header. You can load in components. You can load in components that are your logo, components that are a button click that can do something. You can stylize the left, like the back arrow to however you want it. You can have it be an icon or a component to do something else. There's a whole lot of customization you can do. I'm gonna show you some of the basics. Um, and this will be, across your entire app, like your entire mobile app will inherit these rules. But within the component that you're navigating to, for instance, in my all blocks component, I can actually override these rules specifically from that component. So maybe I want the header to be a slightly different color in one component or one screen versus another. So let's go ahead and start with our most basic prop, which will be our initial route name. And this takes a string value, and the string value will be the name of one of your screen routes. So earlier I had home, and if you stuck to home, you can use that, but I have changed mine to all blogs. So I'm gonna say all blogs is my initial route name. And with any luck, this will actually load the all blogs.tsx or screen, and that's what should be appearing when we come back to our simulator finally and refresh this. After that, we can do some default navigation options, which is a property that is an object. And I told you all it gets kind of gnarly with the curly braces, which I'm going kind of slow on and making sure you have time to keep up and make sure yours are lined up properly. And in here, we're going to specify something called header style, meaning I want to stylize the header across our application in our stack nav. And as you notice, it is indeed another object with multiple properties within. And this is where you can use your background color and other things like that. And I'm gonna say, I want a background color of 43005B. That should be a kind of like an 80s vaporwave purple that I like to use across my apps. And we can say a header tint color, which should I think correspond to the text that appears on that guy. And we can actually say header title style Title style is yet another object. Hmm, have I forgotten something? I don't know why I'm getting an error. Not to type, hold on. We've clearly messed something up, which is never fun. So we have a header tint color and we should have some kind of header title style. Huh, must have typoed it. Unknowingly. Okay, well, sorry if you guys are screaming at me. I just didn't notice, but you know, we're already too far gone to stop this video and try splicing something that makes sense in. And I'm just going to make the title bold just to show you guys hey, this is all like some of the basic options you can do. Yeah, I just wanted to give you all a, a quick little glimpse of how you can style it and how kind of crazy you can already get with all these curly braces everywhere. But you can look at the documentation for all the other props, and because we're using TypeScript with IntelliSense and this file is typed, we can actually begin typing in the first letter of any kind of property and we can see what our autofills are with IntelliSense suggesting things to us. Okay. So from there we are just adding this, there we go, just spacing some things out and letting my auto format do the work. I'm actually going to move all the curly braces onto their own lines. There we go. There we go. 
We're going to keep it like very spaced out and very obvious where things are supposed to be lining up. I'm going to save this file, and what we're going to do now is we're going to come back into our app.tsx and refactor this guy. Because remember, our screen should be the exact same thing, except it should say all blog screen, indicating to us that we have gotten the basic setup ready to go. We won't need this style sheet anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that entire thing, delete the import up top, and honestly, I don't believe we're even going to need our text review anymore. So I'm going to delete those, but we are going to need our app container, which is exported and injected from the app container.ts file. Okay. Leave those generic types there with nothing in them. I'm going to delete these views. I'm going to say use our app container component there. And with any luck, if I save this file and we come back and check out our simulator and we, for Android users, you double tap R, it's either command R or the same thing these days on your Xcode iOS simulators and refresh it. And there you go. There's our purple header. There's no title, which is okay. We can come fix that in a minute. But we have this confirmation that our stack nav is working. We have a title bar. Eventually, we'll have some header text in here and back and forward arrows if you want them. And we have the confirmation that the all blog screen is our initial route. And that is awesome. It's these little victories, especially with React Native, that if you can get up and running, you should feel intensely proud and... You, know, you should be having a good, good time. Like This is a lot of fun to get up and running. Once you get in the swing of things, it is a blast making a mobile app. So we'll see you all in the next video when we continue on this journey.